Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another book haul, my May book haul. You know how I love buying books and I, even more so, I love to share them with you. I don't think that sentence made sense grammatically, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I have seven books for you today um, and the first one is Tess Gerritsen Bloodstream, uh, first published in 1998. Um, and I start with this book because I read it already. Tess Gerritsen is um, a well-known, best-selling medical thriller author. Uh, she lives in Maine. And even though I really like a crime novel, I've never read her. And uh, about a week or 10 days ago, I was in the mood, really in the mood for a, you know, fast-paced, easy read crime. And I thought, I'm going to go with Tess Gerritsen, and it didn't disappoint. Um, it's, it centers around a, 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 a doctor, uh, Claire Elliott, uh, who just moved to this t uh, town in Maine, Tranquility, a, fic a fictitious town in Maine, and then um, they are children, they act strangely, and uh, Claire has to investigate. It's just what it's, it, it is what it is supposed to be. You know, good entertainment. Um, it's nothing um, that you know I will uh, go back to or that uh, changed my life fundamentally. But it was just good entertainment, and this one is one of Tess Gerritsen's early medical uh, thrillers. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it won't be my last one. It was a, a good choice. Next up is a book that won't surprise you that I bought it because it's Louise Edrick's uh, Tales of Burning Love, first published in 1996. And if you're following my channel, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not going to edit this out. I'm just going to go with the flow today. <laughs> and if you're following my channel, you know that one of my reading projects for 2020 is, uh, I called it Author Spotlight, Louisa Edrick. So I am reading chronologically, publication date, all of Edrick's novels. And I'm doing that together with uh, Terry from Miss Terry B. And this will be our fifth, because it's May. So it's the fifth book, and um, it's set in um, um, the 1980s, 1990s. Uh, five women uh, tell their story of burning love with the same man. Uh, I'm really loving this project, I have to say, to you know slowly make your way through an author's backlist. And not every book is equally fantastic. Can't be if you read all the work of one particular author. But I'm really liking the way you see how an author developed as a writer. And this is a, a, a book in her Love Medicine series. So we will, uh, I, I'm sure that we will go back to characters that we have uh, read about before. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, Terry and I will be reading this, I think we'll start next week second half of the month, so I'll keep you posted. Next up is nonfiction and a book that I was doubtful for a long time whether I should buy it and read it, and it's Marja Mills, The Mockingbird Next Door, My Life with Harper Lee, first published in 2015. Now, Marja Mills uh, is a journalist. Uh, she was a feature writer for the Chicago Tribune, and in the beginning of this millennium, 2001-2002, um, she moved in next door uh, to the Lee sister, Harper Lee, and her uh, younger sister, Alice. Um, and she recorded, you know, uh, the, the, her encounters and her view on Harper Lee. You know how much I love To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, we're not going to talk about Go Set the Watchman. This book should never have been published. It's a disgrace. But anyway, but why was I uh, doubtful? Because uh, Alice, uh, so Harper Lee's sister, um, really didn't uh, like this book at all. Um, and she claimed that Marja Mills sort of wiggled herself into Harper Lee's life in order, you know, to write this book on the 
and that she uh, made the acquaintance and friendship with Harper Lee under false pretenses and that the book doesn't reflect Harper Lee's character or life or Alice's life for that matter uh, in the slightest. So it's, it's a controversial book to say the least, but I, I found this used copy and I thought, well, the best thing with a controversy as always is to make up my own mind. Um, so I, I will read it uh, and then I will see for myself what I think. The next book, we go back to fiction again, uh, is another backlisted book, and that is Miriam Taves' The Flying Troutmans, first published in 2008. Now, you know um, that Miriam Taves is certainly one of my favorite contemporary writers. She's a Canadian writer. I loved her most recent book, uh, Women Talking. Um, um, I loved, I, did, I haven't read obviously everything, um, but so far she hasn't disappointed me ever. And The Flying Troutmans is one of the books that I haven't read yet. Um, it's about two sisters, um, Hattie and Min, um, and Hattie uh, is in Paris and she receives um, uh, the a message that her sister Min has been checked into a psychiatric hospital. So Hattie flies back from Paris to Winnipeg and she takes care of uh, her sister's uh, two children and uh, because the mother is in, in a psychiatric hospital, uh, Hattie decides to take the two children um, in her car uh, looking for the long lost quote unquote father. Uh, that's basically all I know. Um, but like I said, Miriam Taves is one of these authors that I really want to read all of her backlist. It was a touch and go <laughs> with the author Spotlight with Miriam Taves and Louisa Edrick, uh, but because uh, Terry um, so much wanted uh, to do the Louisa Edrick, I thought it's it's fun to do the author Spotlight as a buddy read, so we I chose Louisa Edrick, uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to read all of Miriam Taves' work, and I'm really looking forward to this one. The next book I bought is House on Endless Waters by Emuna Elon, uh, translated from uh, the Hebrew by Anthony Barris. And, oh dear, I have to look that up. Sorry about the glare. Um, Anthony Barris and Linda Yekiel. Um, uh, it, the English translation was published in January, and you might remember that I featured this book in my January TBR, January to be released video. Um, um, Emuna Elon is an Israeli author born in 1955, and this is her fourth novel, and I think her first one has also been translated into English, so this is the second one translated into English, but I have never read her. Um, I will be buddy reading this uh, in June with Brian from Bookish. I will leave a link to his channel down below. If you don't know him, please go check him out and subscribe. Um, and I was drawn to the book, first of all, because I'm interested in discovering more translated authors, uh, certainly if it's authors from outside of Europe, um, but also because the book is set in Amsterdam, and I've been living in Amsterdam for over two decades. So the book features um, a famous writer, uh, Joel Blum, who is asked by his Dutch publisher, he doesn't live in Holland, uh, to come and visit his hometown Amsterdam, even though your Bloom, uh, for a reason we will discover in the book, I'm sure, uh, decided that he will never go back to Amsterdam. Uh, so he goes back with his wife and uh, they visit a museum, a Jewish museum, and in that museum he sees a photograph uh, from obviously before the war and before the Holocaust of his uh, parents uh, and his younger sister Nettie, uh, but there is also um, a young child in the picture that he doesn't recognize, and then of course he goes on to investigate his family history. So uh, the, the, the combination of translated uh, fiction uh, set in Amsterdam and Jewish history um, made me really want to read this book, and I'm very happy that Brian agreed to read it with me in June. Book number six is non-fiction again, and a book that I have already started to read, and that is Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez, and the subtitle says Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. 
I've mean I've been meaning to read this book ever since it has been published last year, and I'm buddy reading it now with Kathleen Ann, who used to have a booktube channel, but unfortunately it doesn't make videos anymore. But she is a fabulous buddy reader, nevertheless. Um, so Carolyn uh, Criado Perez was born in Brazil, but she lives in London now. She is a campaigner, uh, a feminist campaigner and writer. Um, and the book does just what it says. Uh, Perez explores all kinds of areas of life where there is a data gap with regards to women. So for instance, uh, if you take medicine, uh, I don't know, blood pressure medicine, um, the medical trials for this uh, particular medication will have been done on men and not women. Um, if you look at the GPD of your country, that doesn't include the unpaid labor, mostly done by women. So she explores really a wide range of areas, private, public, government, um, how many women are in parliament. And her point is not so much that women uh, uh, are uh, not represented but her point is that there is no data so that the data we base a lot of our decisions on uh, whether it's um, a new medication or whether it's a seat belt or your airbag in an in an in a car all these things are based on data for men so women are not featured in this research in this data and that has implication serious implication sometimes even fatal implication and i i'm halfway we are halfway through uh, and i'm really loving it but i will talk about this i'm sure uh, much more even more extensively than now uh, in either in a recent reads or in a tops and flops video and the last book uh, i want to uh, talk to you about is a memoir and that is let me see here, yeah. Gabriele Tergit, um, Etwas Seltenes überhaupt, something rare. It means, it's not really, Mel, you can translate that better than me, but something rare. So it's her uh, memoir. Uh, Gabriele Tergit was a, a, a German journalist uh, and writer. Uh, she published um, a huge novel about uh, German, J Jewish German family um, in the, in, early 20th century, Effingers. I read that um, last month and I featured it in my uh, tops and flops. It was one of the tops of the month uh, of uh, April. Um, so I was really interested in her. I have to say this hasn't been translated into English. The only book um, that I could find so far that has been translated is another novel by Gabriele Tergit, uh, Käsebier uh, Conquers the Kurfürstendamm. Um, so unfortunately, if you don't read German, you can just stop the video now. <laughs> Uh, but I, I was fascinated uh, by, by this woman. I have never read her. I haven't even heard of her. And of course, I'm reading this uh, for the uh, Read German Books 2020 challenge, the Goodreads group. The link is down below in which we encourage people, also ourselves, uh, to read more German books. And I'm uh, doing this group, uh, this year-long uh, challenge together with Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. And I will read this book together with Mel. Probably end of May, uh, Mel is still waiting for her copy to arrive. And as soon as she has her copy, we will start reading. Okay, so this was it for my May book haul, seven books. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I also hope you're all safe and healthy. Um, I'm looking forward to your comments. As always, if you read any of the books that I featured, please let me know. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.